Hello everyone, myself Sandranika Das, 4th year student of BBSC and AH from Lakhimpur College of Veterinary Science. My presentation on listeriosis. Here I am going to discuss about the disease, its causes, how it is transmitted, its clinical signs and symptoms, about the diagnosis, treatment and control and prevention. So let's start with the introduction. Synonyms. Listeriosis is also known as circling disease, meningoencephalitis, and cystic disease. So, what is listeriosis? It is an infectious fatal zoonotic disease of wide range of animals and men, caused mainly by the bacterium Listeria monocytogens. It is characterized by encephalitis, septicemia, and sometimes abortion in pregnant animals. Epidemiology: Listeriosis is distributed worldwide. It is sporadic but can occur as farm outbreaks in ruminants. It is most frequently found in temperate and colder climate. It is more common in ruminants. Then etiology. Listeriosis is most commonly caused by Listeria monocytogens. It is a gram-positive, rod-shaped, facultative, intracellular bacteria. It is ubiquitous non-spore forming motile diphtheroid coccobacilli. It has characteristics tumbling motility at 25 degree centigrade but it is non-motile at 37 degree centigrade. It can survive at 4 degree centigrade to 44 degree centigrade and pH range from 4.5 to 9. It has been reported that uh, Listeria Ivanovi can cause Listeriosis, especially in ruminants and occasionally in humans. Then come to susceptible host. It can affect wide range of animals like cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, horse, pig, dog, cat, rabbit, birds, fish, and uh, it can affect uh, wild animals and humans also. The small ruminants the sheep which are most susceptible to the listeriosis. Transmission. It is transmitted through the ingestion of feed and water contaminated with saliva, feces, nasal shares and aborted fetal material. Soil acts as potential source of the transmission and the silage, the poor quality silage is the important spreader of this disease because the poor quality silage which pH more than 5 it is the good multiplication site for the listeria then the inhalation is uh, can be another route for the transmission of this bacteria then through the wound contamination if uh, there is some minor injury in uh, oral mucosa nasal mucosa and uh, in conjunctiva also it may lead to the disease then uh, through the transplacental root the listeria uh, it uh, cross the placental barrier and it uh, affects the fetus then through the carrier animals and rodents it uh, transmit the disease listeriosis and zoonosis listeriosis uh, now considered as an uh, emerging foodborne zoonosis of increased public health significance because listeria can cause severe and life-threatening complication in men along with animals especially immunocompromised or pregnant women so the human beings uh, get the infection only from the animals uh, the intestine of the infected animals or carrier animals uh, is the main reservoir of the bacterial listeria so it is a uh, shred in feces so through the feces or by the uh, uses of manure it can uh, contaminate the environment so from the environment the human get uh, infection through the vegetables fruits or uh, by the water or the uh, listeria it can be shed in meal so the consumption of uh, unpasteurized or unhygienically obtained milk can uh, cause the disease in human beings so the food products food, dairy byproducts or uh, fish meat 
they also cause a uh, infection in human beings due to the poor measures uh, quality control during food processing or handling or during the packaging so maintenance of proper hygiene is a uh, very important to control or prevention of this uh, disease the pathogenesis the bacteria enter through the ingestion then it goes to the intestine where it localized in the intestinal mucosa and cause bacteremia after that it uh, goes to the liver and spleen then uh, it enter into the systemic circulation or blood and uh, lodge in the various organs and cause fatal septicemia mm, after uh, causing septicemia it uh, goes lesions in various organs and uh, the bacteria may go to the other and uh, cause clinical mastitis the bacteria invade placenta or placental barrier after invading placenta it uh, cause abortion or uh, fetal septicemia uh, in mouth and nostril the bacteria pass through the oral or nasal mucosa after that uh, it ascend to the trisomial nerve then uh, through trisomial nerve it traverses brain stem and lodge here and cause encephalitis and other lesions in brains then come to clinical findings there is three types of manifestation like uh, disease with encephalitis then disease with abortion then disease with septicemia so first uh, i'll discuss uh, about the encephalitis uh, it uh, is the most common in uh, ruminants uh, but it occur occasionally in the animal having encephalic form uh, there is a depression dullness which rise of temperature uh, if found uh, the dummy syndrome and head pressing against the barrier there is a unilateral facial paralysis with uh, drooling of saliva uh, it is the most uh, important clinical sign then the deer may be deviated muscle flaccid lip and lower eyelid and uh, you can see uh, conjunctivitis is a nasal discharge then uh, you can uh, see the animals moves in circle or circling movement in the one direction uh, it may be either left or right direction uh, the death may occur due to respiratory failure because of uh, paralysis of pharynx uh, in sheep and goat the course is very rapid and uh, the death occur 24 to 48 hours after onset of signs and the uh, recovery rate uh, in sheep it is uh, up to 30 percent and in cattle it is uh, 50 percent in this slide uh, you can see the sheep is uh, moving in circles in the right direction and the picture b uh, it is the further step of the infectious process uh, where the animal will lie on the ground and uh, with the signs of incoordination and cranial nerve paralysis then here the first picture there is a head tilt with ear dropping and there is salivation and hanging of hay from the mouth is uh, because of uh, the neuromuscular damage or paralysis and in the second picture there is there is also a head tilt and uh, there is flaccid lip and uh, protrusion of tongue then the in this slide the left one uh, the ship it is a uh, it leans against the barriers or in the right one you can see the ship it uh, propels itself into the corners or the fences then the abortion uh, this form is really or abortion then come to next form abortion uh, abortion is really occurs in last trimester and there may be retention of placenta uh, usually generally the fetus die in the uterus but uh, stillbirth or neonatal death may occur 
in which it shows partially open cervix and brown valvular discharge and uh, abortion rate in sheep uh, it is a uh, 20% and uh, animals uh, which are uh, having abortion or this form uh, it may not show the signs of meningoencephalitis then come to other form uh, septicemia uh, then come to another form uh, is the septicemia it is the most common in monogastric animals and uh, it is not common in adult ruminants uh, but uh, neonatal ruminants it suffer because of their uh, because uh, their rumen is not properly developed or uh, the animals uh, having the septicemia it uh, includes depression pyrexia there may be emaciation and uh, diarrhea there is corneal opacity you can see dyspnea opistodonus then nystagmus and death may occur within 12 hours following onset of signs then come to lesion in uh, encephalic form there is perivascular coughing of lymphocytes then uh, there is microabscess and lymphocytic leptomeningitis in brain there is a uh, congestion in meninges then uh, you can see the cloudiness of csf because of presence of excess globulin or uh, leukocytes then uh, panophthalmitis may be there and uh, in septicemic form there is a necrosis or necrotic foci in liver, spleen, endocardium, pericardium and lungs and uh, in the abortion there is a placentitis or endometritis you can see then uh, in this slide the uh, left one there is a uh, there is a picture of meningoencephalitis and in the right picture there is uh, some abscess in brain then the, here uh, the picture a you can see the congestion in the brain and uh, the picture b it shows the perivascular coughing the lymphocytes and uh, the diagnosis diagnosis is uh, based on the history clinical findings and lesions uh, the history includes uh, the previous exposure of uh, disease or feeding habits grazing pressure and uh, we can observe the animals uh, uh, for the signs and symptoms which are um, helpful for presenting diagnosis and uh, definitive diagnosis can be made by isolation of and isolation and identification of bacteria diagnosis uh, diagnosis is uh, based on history, clinical findings, and lesions. The history it uh, includes the previous exposure of disease, feeding habits, grazing pressure, and uh, we can observe the signs and symptoms of the animals, uh, which are or which may be helpful for presumptive diagnosis. And for definitive diagnosis, uh, it can be made uh, by isolation and identification of bacteria in the selective agar media and in this picture you can see there is a hemolysis in sheep blood agar and uh, for isolation of the organism uh, we can collect the uh, organs or the materials uh, in the septicemic form we can collect the spleen liver and uh, in encephalitic form we can collect spinal fluid then pons medulla for uh, isolation of organism and in the abortion uh, you can collect the placenta then fetal content or uterine discharge then uh, the animal inoculation intracerebral injection uh, of uh, infective brain materials which uh, causes death in the uh, mice uh, in uh, tutu or within two to three days then the serological test uh, ELISA with uh, CFT then we can go for fluorescence antibody test then the, the we can go peroxidase or antiperoxidase technique which uh, give the definitive diagnosis then come to the differential diagnosis 
we should differentiate the disease uh, which are or uh, which have similar signs uh, like listeriosis so here i have mentioned some disease uh, like rabies lead poisoning ketosis and brucellosis in rabies there is bellowing ascending paralysis and salivation but uh, there is a history of bite or uh, in lead poisoning there is blindness chronic spasm and convulsion may be there but there is also history of poisoning in ketosis uh, in ketosis there is a offed uh, condition of the animals there may be ketonuria ketolectemia and uh, we we can find some sweet smell bread then uh, there is also history of perforation and uh, the rotary test which uh, which is a uh, positive in ketosis and the animals which uh, respond to glucose therapy in ketosis then uh, brucellosis in uh, brucellosis there is uh, abortion in the last trimester so in the brucellosis or other uh, disease which uh, cause the abortion in the last trimester it should differentiate from the listeriosis uh, through the serological test or microbiological test coming to treatment uh, is really it uh, depends on the form of disease but uh, in general the treatment includes uh, antibiotics penicillin is the drug of choice uh, if uh, if penicillin not available then you can use the other drugs uh, which i have mentioned below in the table drug of choice penicillin z dose rate 44000 iu per kg body weight daily through im route for seven days then we can go for oxytetracycline uh, dose rate uh, 10 mg per kg daily im or iv route or you can use the sulfonamide uh, at the dose rate of 150 mg per kg daily uh, through im or iv route then uh, amoxicillin uh, at the dose rate of 7 mg per kg daily through im route gentamicin at the dose rate of 3 to 5 mg per kg body weight uh, at uh, 12 hours interval through uh intramuscularly or intravenously then chloramphenicol 10 to 20 mg per kg at uh, 8 hours interval by intravenously so we can uh, give the combination of amoxicillin and gentamicin which also found uh, effective against listeriosis we can go for supportive therapy fluid and electrolyte therapy which uh, support the body condition and um, uh, restore the food loss and we can provide vitamins like b vitamin or b vitamin which uh, reduce the neurological signs and symptoms then um, we can give vitamin e or selenium then we can give uh, nsid to reduce the inflammation fever or pain here uh, i have given some drugs uh, the nsid like uh, you can give flinching megalovan at the dose rate of 1.1 to 2.2 kg uh, mg per kg body weight then some vitamins and electrolytes and uh, the b vitamins trivivate here um, contains b b2 b3 injection then prevention and control the disposing of litters and bedding of infected animals by burying method then uh, we can use spoiled silage or the poor quality silage and rotten vegetation should not be fed to the animals then disinfect the premises then restriction of ancillus feeding in the angiotic areas then the tetracycline or chlorotetracycline uh, can add in the added in the feed as a preventive measure when there is an outbreak and uh, the slave vaccination it is the important to control the listeriosis uh, vaccine at the dose rate 2 ml uh, at the age of three months through the subcutaneous route in shape then here are the references where i have collected the information and thank you